Hi, this is a quick overview of my mesh painting plugin for Unreal Engine. This video will focus on functionality rather than workflow. So if you already have the plugin, be sure to check out the online knowledge base because there's a lot of content in here to get you started. Now let's get started with mesh painting. Our first example is character painting. Here we have a character onto which we are going to add paint. Although I use the term painting, our general objective is to create a certain kind of an effect by manipulating all of the different properties which the plugin offers to you. In this case, I want to add lava to this character. So I'm using the painted areas to blend in lava and I'm also using world position offset to kind of drive the effect home. I can come over to the back side and I can do some stuff here too. Now, all you need is one blueprint node known as paint stroke, which to which you pass in a hit effect. Um, the cursor position of my UI is translated into a world space position and that is used to determine where you create the hit and then in your material you have a node known as dawn mesh paint and that is used to actually render the effect out. Um, but for the sake of this video we are going to move on to the next example. If you want to learn more about these nodes again the knowledge base that I showed earlier um, talks a lot about all of this. Now let's look at decals. Decals allow you to take any custom image supplied by you and project it onto a mesh or a landscape or a prop or anything you like. So I can do stuff like this. I can come over to the back side and maybe some stuff like that. So the performance of this system is several times higher than what you'd get with Unreal's decal system because no decal actors are used out here. Everything is a texture which is, you know, we figure out the UV location, we stamp it onto a texture and your material reads it using a dawn mesh paint node provided by the plugin. So this technique is several times more efficient than um, decal actors. So landscape painting. The plugin allows you to modify your landscape material at runtime through a texture which we paint in world space. So here I'm using my left mouse button to create lava, my right mouse button to add some water and all of this works through world space painting. To learn how to set this up for your project, Visit the knowledge base article, um, this one out here. If you go to material functions, world space, there's a pretty comprehensive article about how all of this works and what kind of setup you need. The other examples in mesh painting deal with texture packing, um, local space painting and graffiti on walls. But we are going to skip these and move on to UMG tattoos. So here I can type in a name. Uh, let's not do that. Let's just say Venu 1. And here I just managed to create a shirt for myself. So let's do that one more time. And then 1. Again, I don't want a number here. I want my numbers on this side. And so I'm able to take UMG text, which is, uh, you know, entered by the user. And I'm able to stamp that onto a character. And you can do this you know on a landscape you can do this on a static mesh the applications are you know limitless let's switch gears a bit and move on to paint blob collisions because i know a lot of you out there are interested in this so in the first example we are going to fire projectiles through holes so i'm going to create some holes out here like that and i'm going to use my right mouse button to fire projectiles and as you can see everything works so the projectiles know exactly where they can pass through where they can't but the first thing you should know about this solution is that um, this is not a physical solution. From Unreal Engine's point of view, the collision geometry of the wall hasn't changed. So what we're doing out here is a bit of trickery using um, a brief period of teleportation. So um, that is where Dawn's Paint Blob APIs help you. You're provided with blueprint nodes which you can use to query pixel collisions at a certain point in world space for a certain primitive and you can use that information to decide whether a projectile can pass through or whether it can't. Now to make your life easier, um, I've created a smart projectile which you can use to, which is compatible with any of your existing projectiles. So all you need to do is take your projectile, reparent it to the Dawn smart projectile component and you'll be able to do exactly this with your own projectiles. But if you're interested in some of the more advanced case use cases, which we are going to look out here, then you do have some work cut out for you. So let's move on to some of these examples now. Um, traps, events and gameplay triggers. Here I'm going to place lava traps 
with my left mouse button and that's what happens. I'm going to place behavior cues with my right mouse button and this behavior cue tells the AI to jump. It's actually just a blob of water but the way I've um, written this for the sample project, anytime the AI detects water, it's going to jump over it. So this kind of pixel collisions and pixel powered gameplay um, really opens up a rich world of possibilities. There's so many things you can do um, with this pixel power. This example is character interaction on a flow pit. So I'm able to create blast holes here and dunk the AI down like that. But the really interesting part is the hole size. The AI is able to sense how big the holes are. So if I create small holes, it just walks over them. If I create slightly larger holes like that, then the AI jumps over it because it knows that to believably pass through, it needs to you know make a jump. But now if I make my holes even larger, I'm able to you know bring the AI down. So this kind of uh, pixel intelligence happens with uh, the query paint collision multi-node. So you're able to create advanced queries and bucket um, your queries by factors like hole size and things like that. Um, but once again, check out the sample project and the documentation to learn more about how to orchestrate a complex use case like this. This example is really pushing the limits of what uh, paint blob collisions are capable of. I'll have to warn you in advance that it is a bit glitchy and um, you know there are many limitations which come into play because like I said earlier from Unreal Engine's point of view these collisions do not exist so you're constantly fighting against that fact but still this is a pretty fun example so I encourage you to try it out and um, you know, see if you can break it because that'll um, help you learn and understand the limitations of this plugin so more than anything else, this example is a great way to learn what paint block collisions can't offer for you rather than what it can. But in the simple example, I've carefully orchestrated this kind of portal travel where the AI is able to pass through it. But uh, there are limitations not just on the collisions but also on the visuals. So as you can see, there are some you know edges out here, back faces which don't look good and things like that. So that kind of stuff is not provided by the plugin out of the box. So you will need to solve all of that on your own if you want to create something like this. This is a fun example though to try, uh, try out and um, learn the setup behind the character because there's a lot of interesting tricks going on behind the scenes to make this kind of stuff work. Finally, we have global effects. The plugin isn't just a mesh painting solution or a pixel collision API. It also allows you to orchestrate global effects like a fog of war system. This fog of war system was put together using just two nodes, a single blueprint node, paint world direct and a material node inside a post process material. So I'm going to start this and it works as expected. As the bot moves around, it goes around unfogging areas and I can do that too. I'm able to unfog this particular, you know, piece of land as I move around it. So to learn how to set this up, again visit the knowledge base. Thank you for staying with me 10 minutes into this video. As a special treat, before we go, I'm going to show you some of the multiplayer aspects of this plugin. So I have a server and a client. I'm going to bring my client over here and I'm going to start painting on this character. And as you can see, the view of the server and the view of the client are identical. Both of them have the same view of the world, which is what you would expect. And all of this works out of the box. You don't need to do any special work or extra setup. Again, in the graffiti example, I'm painting some graffiti here and the client has the same view as the server. Now, I'm going to do something mean. I'm going to take some lava from here and splash it on the character and the client goes down. So. Paint blob collisions also work in multiplayer and that's fully automatic too. So all features in this plugin support are network ready, support multiplayer and it's all out of the box. You don't need to do anything um, special. Alright, thanks for checking out my plugin. Uh, the scope of this plugin is rather broad. There's many different aspects to it. So I wasn't able to cover all the examples or all the use cases in this short video. But if you want to learn more, just check out the knowledge base. There's a lot of information in here about not just the workflow 
but also things like known limitations and issues. So if you're interested in getting the plugin, this is a great place to learn about what it can and what it can't do for your project. So um, let's see, there's also some examples I haven't covered out here, but you can check them out at your own pace. So just let me know if you have any issues using the plugin or if you want to know if there are certain things that it can do for your project and I'll be happy to answer on the forum thread. Uh, if you're having any issues with the plugin with certain edge cases or trying to get things to work, let me know as well and I'll be more than happy to maybe add an e another example out here to help you out or you know maybe make certain fixes or updates or whatever else you need. So thanks a lot for checking out my plugin. I really love to see many of your games use it and um, I hope that you find it beneficial and I hope that it helps your games succeed. Thanks a lot for watching.